Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and we've got a colorful one for you today. So let's get right into it. So again, we're starting off with uh, my typical head shape where the forehead is absolutely massive because, I don't know, it's the way I like drawing it. I like that cute moe look, and uh, that was definitely what I was going for here. So I went for kind of a uh, beach scene with kind of a floaty and in and having the character on top of the floaty. Uh, it was kind of tricky to get right. I probably should have drawn the floaty first before I drew the character, but I was like, I can do this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's kind of a more extreme perspective here, but it's definitely, like, a whole lot of fun, and I, I really enjoyed how it turned out. So getting the character to fit in the tube was kind of difficult because I, I went about doing this in the wrong order, if that makes sense. I also had to adjust the composition quite a bit because it was a bit awkward at times, but I definitely still uh, think it turned out pretty good. Also, drawing squish, super important. So we're starting to get all the features in. I'm making small adjustments, adding uh, frills to the float that I ended up not sticking with in the final product. Maybe I should have, but I was just kind of being lazy if I'm being 100% honest. I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do with the hands. Originally, I hid them, but I thought, ah, that's a cop-out. I gotta at least try to draw the hands. So I had to come up with different arm positions and kind of figure it all out. I'm not sure what the big pause was here. I might have had to get up and do something. Let me see if anything happens or if I'm going to have to edit this out. So I did actually have to make a cut here because I realized I must have been doing something around that time because I was not drawing and I kind of just prattled on before realizing that nothing was happening. So that was something I had to fix. But here we go. Now we're drawing the character's swimsuit. And I ended up changing it again in the final product, but for the most part it stayed the same. A little bit of adjustments with the liquify tool. I then drew hair all over the... Uh, the floaty just because draping hair is a whole lot of fun and it looks really nice. I went for the hand here, but what I did not realize when I started drawing it was I, I the hand almost looked backwards, so I had to fix it in the uh, in the line art because it just didn't quite look right. But it is what it is for the most part. Now we're starting to get in the details with the eyes, which I did super fast, I just realized. So we are going to get a big jump ahead in time, because even though I drew the sketch, I didn't, um, I didn't record myself coloring the sketch like I usually do, so I had to um, kind of just go from there. So that's a big mistake on, on my end from the recording side of things, and as you, if, if you watch my channel frequently... F bleh, frequently, you'll know that I have a lot of uh, issues with um, forgetting to hit record just because I'll take breaks and then I'll forget to hit the record button and by the time I realize it, I'm like halfway done with something. So I gotta fix that in the future and see if I can remind myself, put like a sticky note on my monitor that's like, don't forget to record. But, um, yeah, the lines, again, I use thin lines to show off the rendering and not necessarily the, uh, the line art. Even though I really enjoy doing line art and do a lot of detail on them, for the most part, I, uh, I end up not having the lines as visible by the end result. But, yeah, there, there was definitely a lot of line art I had to do this time. There's, um, there's a lot going on in the background. And if it sounds like I'm mumbling my words at all, there's a reason for that. I am straight up have canker sores in my mouth right now from like I had a cut in my mouth and it's right in the spot where my tongue is. So I had this weird, like almost little tiny mumbles in my voice right now. Thanks for that stupid cut. So yeah, that's another thing I have to live with today. <laughs> this has been going on for about a week now, so I got to wait for it to heal. Yeah, this is where I tried to fix the hand. I realized that it looked backwards, so I had to kind of fix that. But I think uh, that the hand is pretty iffy. It's it's honestly, in my personal opinion, I think I kind of botched the hand. But 
it's passable, I guess. So now we're doing the floaty, kind of adjusting it to look correct. The reason why the um, the little armbands are going up instead of down on the uh, arm over there is mainly because she is leaning up against the float, so it pushes it up. Now we're doing the eyes. Man, I love drawing eyes. <laughs> Yeah, doing pretty good so far. Um, I ended up deleting the second bow just because I thought it kind of took away from things visually. So, asymmetry for the win, I guess. Now we're doing the hair. I actually rendered super fast this time because I didn't go for my full range of uh, color. So once we get to rendering, you'll notice it goes by super quickly. Lots of draping hair. I love that stuff. So now we're starting to add some thickness to everything. Kind of doing the ears real quick. I felt this artwork... Uh, actually, the funny thing is this artwork did really well on Twitter. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to succeed or not, but it ended up doing really good. I think it got 11,000 likes, which felt awesome. It's always good whenever an artwork that you hope does well does well. Um, art, it's, the funny thing about artworks, especially online, is you never know what's going to succeed. Even if you feel you've done everything right that the internet loves, there's always a chance that it either underperforms or overperforms or stays somewhere in the middle. Um... You have to know your audience, and even then, if you know your audience, there's no guarantee that it's going to hit. You know what I mean? So, it's best to try not to get upset whenever an artwork doesn't do well. Um, a while back, I had an artwork that I made that I was really proud of that didn't do well, and I thought for sure it was going to do awesome, and it didn't. And I thought by now, with how long I've been doing this, it wouldn't affect me, but... It actually did. It, it really bummed me out. Um, and luckily, whenever I expressed that, it bummed me out. And it wasn't me being like, oh, woe is me. I ended up having to correct myself online because I realized it's not a good look to be uh, whining about, oh, no, I only got 600 to 1,000 likes. Like, come on. Many people would kill for that. Me whining about it is so out of touch. So, for the most part, I ended up apologizing to everyone, saying, Hey, I realize I'm in a very, uh... I'm in a good position, and I shouldn't be so upset about it, even if it underperforms in my mind. Social media is such a cancer for the brain, because it makes you think, after you grow, you, you think you're gonna get constant growth. You're always thinking, it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better, you're gonna grow larger. But eventually, it's gonna plateau. It always does. There's only so many people that want to see or can see your work. So, still sometimes I have to remind myself that it's not all about the likes. And sometimes the people who are your most common commenters and the people who tell you that they like your stuff, they're more important in your life than likes or retweets. Or even subscribers, like on YouTube. It's like those those commenters, the ones who are there for every video or every artwork, they matter so much more. If I upset them, I know I've done something wrong. So now we're getting into the details. As you can see, I'm taking what I've learned from muted subdued colors and I've figured out a balance of uh, saturation versus desaturation. And I think I'm starting to slowly figure it out. There's a lot of color in this artwork. But I'm using it to lead the eye. Also, the way I did waves in the water this time was so much different than what I usually do. I I used a reference of uh, actual waves. And even though what I did wasn't perfect, I feel like I got the idea correct. I just need to practice it more. So, it's going to take time, but I think I can get it. Now we add the add glow that I usually do. Uh... Honestly, I probably should have undone that shadow that I added to the water. But anyway, here we have the finishing touches. We're zoomed in, everything looks nice. And we're gonna start doing the post-processing. Here is, so here's a hard light layer, some tonal curve, a multiply layer to kind of add more shadow, some level correction. 
And there we go. We're pretty much done. Just little details now. All right. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.